point does it become safe to start thinking about buying a high-quality enterprise software company like Oracle with a very cheap stock that's just been obliterated over the last seven-odd months? We know that Oracle's legacy business has been challenged for some time, but under the leadership of CEO Mark Hurd, the company has been making an aggressive push into the cloud. In the last quarter, the company saw its cloud-based software as a service grew at a tremendous 38% clip. Management indicated that figure could climb to 50% in the current quarter, possibly 60% in the quarter after that. Plus, Oracle has been hosting a series of events all over the world, dubbed Cloud World, with the goal of educating existing customers about their cloud offerings and also bringing in new ones. The latest Cloud World event took place in New York City today, and Mark Hurd, the CEO of Oracle, is joining us now. Mark, welcome back to Mid Money. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Now, I understand you're talking about the cloud business and your cloud business growing 49, 52 percent. Then the next quarter, even faster. How can you have accelerated revenue growth in an environment where a lot of companies are seeing flat revenue? I think it's an interesting point. I mean, we've our cloud has grown. Right. Um, and as our revenue has gotten bigger, actually, our growth rate has accelerated. And there are a couple reasons for that. Okay. One is technology. We've done a lot of engineering. We think we have the best products. Mm -hmm. uh, our sales force has gotten more accustomed to selling cloud. Uh, as we've done it, we've gotten more references and reference and sell. So customers like buying from other customers and the combination of all of those have led to great success. But what gives you the surety given the fact that we think the world has become a difficult place? And when we look at the stock market and we right. think sometimes that economies are falling off a cliff, that kind of generation would indicate not only is Oracle doing well, but maybe things aren't so bad out there. Well, first, a lot of the revenue that we're forecasting, we've already booked. Okay, so, so it's a question of provisioning and delivering it. Okay. So a lot of that is really uh, in our hands today, Jim. The more important thing is bookings, uh, bookings which will be done in the current period. We expect to have very strong growth in book bookings in the quarter uh, as well. And it's important to point out you have been adamant. It, this is not necessarily cannibalizing customers that you currently have. Very, very tiny parts of our cloud uh, bookings have come from our traditional applications on-premise support business. Should we be concerned, if we're Oracle shareholders, that you still have a tremendous on-premises business that will uh, actually kind of go down as you win more business in cloud? I think it's a huge advantage. Okay, tell so me. the fact that you have an on-premise capability and a cloud capability and having those two things work together is a huge advantage. What customers want is to take advantage of parts of the cloud mm -hmm. while they still have uh, an on-premise capability. And they'll have that for years to come. The ability to move workloads, <clears throat> excuse me, back and forth is a huge competitive advantage. For uh, us. Margins on cloud versus on-premise? Just as good. Okay, now, give us a little worldview. I mean, you, you're a dominant company worldwide. Some areas, uh, you always dominated emerging growth. Emerging growth seems to be pulling back to some degree, but just both uh, old and new world, how you doing? I think we're doing well. Okay. I mean, we are, obviously you've talked about our cloud growth. Right. Our cloud growth, uh, again, continues to accelerate. Uh, I don't try to get into the world economy too right. much, Jim. That's what you do. Okay. Uh, our job is really given the hand we've gotten the economy to gain market share. And, and that's what we're doing. All right, well, let's talk about gaining market share. Earlier today, we had a Neil Bush read. Uh, one time, I owned a company that you guys purchased and was speaking from Davos. And I'm just going to show you a clip because I know that cloud battles and human capital management are fierce. Can we see that? When we, we compete against two giants right. in SAP and Oracle, who frankly are dinosaurs at this point, but they've been around a long time. Workday calling you a dinosaur. I assume that to be a negative connotation, right. uh, but if in the context of that connotation, he's describing that we're losing, right. then that would just be wrong. Okay, well, he has said to me, head to head, he wins. Uh, empirical examples that that's incorrect? We win more deals than they do. And head to head. Head to head. Taking any clients from you? Um, we've won clients from them, as we announced okay. last quarter. Uh, they've won clients. It's, it's a fight. But any confusion um, that we aren't beating them, let me clear up now. We are. Okay, fair enough. Uh, can you turn off the oxygen, so to speak, on Workday or other companies that are trying to nip at your heels? Yeah, let me try to give you a bigger picture. Okay. So, uh, Workday, uh, which, uh, which this guy is, is running, is basically started as an HCM company, human capital management. 
There's also another part of what you would think of as traditional back office functions, which is ERP, financials, budgeting, planning, et cetera. So they've begun to get into that part of the market. They have, I think they claim to have 120, 130, 140 uh, of those ERP customers today. We have over 1,650. So I just want to do that math again okay. for you. It's about 10 times the size and growing what they have what they have today. All right. Now let, let's talk about the stock itself. You have 10 billion net in cash, 7 billion deferred. You actually have 50, you know, plus billion dollars because you did a bond offering. You can buy back as much stock as you want. Now you bought back a lot of stock, but in the interim, uh, because the market's so tough, your stock hasn't really reflected other than a spike up. Uh, what all that buyback has done, given your cloud emphasis, which is really fast growing, and the buyback, why do you think the stock's been, let's say, uh, 12 times earnings, well below Salesforce at 70, Microsoft at 18, and SAP at 18? I think it's a transition. Listen, we've, okay. Jim, we've invested into this transition. We've invested in R&D. We've invested in building out data center and cloud capability. We've invested in sales and marketing to do everything I just said, right. to be able to generate the sort of growth that, that we've described. That growth now accelerates as we, as you earlier described, mm -hmm. from Q2 into Q3 and into Q4. And I think the stock takes care of itself, but it's been very important for us, Jim, to invest into this. We think this is a, a generational change okay. in IT and computing, and we want to be on the leading, uh, the leading edge of that. I want people to understand what Oracle does, so we, let's have a company that everybody knows, Ambev. Okay, Budweiser, uh, you do uh, customer work for them. Uh, Lufthansa, UAL, another one that we all know. Uh, they call you in, what do they do? So if, if you would think of Oracle in its traditional business, we would actually do their data management, what mm -hmm. you would call their, their database business. We sell middleware. We actually okay. now sell actually the computing infrastructure that houses both that database and that middleware. And then we have a large on-prem applications business. That business now is shifting very dramatically to the cloud. Uh, where we've invested heavily as well. Okay, now to go back to this notion of the Triceratops and the Jurassic World, uh, when I hear that, it would seem to me that you can be more nimble than people think, even though you are a gigantic 140 billion market cap company. The trick with leadership is for scale to be an advantage. Not to be a disadvantage, to your point. The fact is we have, we have the ability to invest, as I've just described, invest in R&D. R&D is now over $5 billion. Uh, our, not, more importantly, I think our yield for the R&D has been significant. We have the ability to have uh, broad distribution, which we have as well. And we've invested in both uh, to take advantage of what we think is a tremendous growth opportunity. Okay, last question. Uh, everyone knows Larry Ellison, one of, the, one of the great investors, one of the great Creators of all time, all right? Owns, still owns 30%. Uh, you talk too much. Do I talk too much? Yeah. Um, every day. Every day. He's still very much involved. Oh, please. Um, we have a great team. It's, 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 it's Saffir Katz, myself, Larry. Uh, Larry is, and by the way, I want to make sure I'm clear, because a lot of people talk about Larry, talk about right. Saffir, and so forth. We, Jim, we have a great team at Oracle. And this team sounds optimistic about the world, which is really important because we're all getting pretty beaten down here. We're optimistic about the world, and really, Jim, we're optimistic about Oracle. We've done the work that a lot of, you know, these transitions into these generational changes, they're tough. It takes a lot of talent, it takes a lot of patience. Um, I think we've done that. All right. Thank you so much, Mark Hurd. He's the CEO of Oracle. Great to speak to you, sir. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.